Hey there, Lickin' Riffers! Welcome back to yet another awesome guitar lesson here on Lickin' Riff, in which I want to address those among you who still believe that blues is simple. And we guitar players, we tend to make that mistaken assumption that blues is simple because that's the way we're taught the blues. We're taught the blues as a simple way to learn guitar, as a simple way to play what's actually a very, very complicated musical construction. So in this video, I aim to completely blow your minds out of proportion because the blues is anything but simple. The blues is actually one of the most complicated musical constructions that you can think of because it's a perfect merger between minor and major. When you're playing the blues, you're playing minor and major at the same time. And when, if you're not a jazz player, then maybe you've heard people say that jazz is actually an extension of the blues. And that's true, even if you can't hear it yet. Um, jazz actually take the complexity, the, the jazz uh, theorists, the, the jazz players of old, if you will, took the complexity of the blues and expanded on it. The jazz is actually, um, you can call it classical blues, uh, if you want. It's, it's blues, but with a lot more than just three basic chords. But um, let's go back to the beginning, okay? We're taught the blues in a very, very, very simple way. And the blues is a, uh, um, it's, it's a genre that is simple to play, but you rarely think of what gives it the special sound. And I gave you the answer at the beginning. Now let me show you what it means, okay? Let's take blues in A. We have three chords, right? We have A7, we have D7, we have E7, right? Three chords. Now you can complicate it, you can add um, a 6, 2, 5, 1 move at the end if you, if you want. I have lessons for that. Um, you can add turnarounds, which are basically 6, 2, 5, 1 moves just without the chord, without the full chord. Never mind that. Let's stay with this simple progression. We have A7, then it goes to D7, then back to A7, then to D7 again, and then you have E7, then it goes back to D7, and then A7 again, and then the chord turnaround would be the E7 again, leading you back to A7. Now, um, the warning sign that this isn't a simple construction would be the 7. All chords are seventh chords. All chords here are dominant chords, and dominant chords are chords with tension. And tension wants to resolve itself. It wants to uh, it wants to solve itself into a nicer harmony. For example, A7 is actually the dominant chord for D. Okay, so if you play A7 and then play D major, it resolves. But when you go to D7, it doesn't resolve. It creates a whole new tension. Now, D7 wants to go to G. Okay? Okay, can you hear it now? Um, so, the D7 goes back to A7. So, this is so unnatural to the way chord progressions actually want to move that only these two chords break the whole, uh, the whole set of um, traditional harmony, the whole set of rules for traditional harmony, because A7 wants to resolve to D, not to D7. D7 wants to resolve itself to G, but G is nowhere to be found. Okay, and I haven't yet gotten to the seventh note, okay? I'm gonna discuss that as well. I'm leading you into it easily. I'm just, uh, I'm easing you into this, okay? I don't want to bombard you with too much information right off the bat, but, okay? But stay with me, okay? So you, you go back to A7, right? And A7 wants to go to D, and then suddenly you have this E7. And E7 wants to resolve itself to A major. So when you go to E7 and you leave it to D7, you create a really sophisticated chord progression without even noticing it. 
because the seventh note is completely outside of these chords. The seventh note of the seventh chord, A7, E7, D7, is not the natural seventh of the major chord. If you want to play A, D, and E as major chords, and you'd like to add the seventh into it, you will play A major seven, a very pleasant chord, because this note is the natural seventh of the major scale, of the A major scale. Okay, and then when you want to play D, you'll play D major seven, which contains this note out of the A chord, okay, but with D, it becomes D major seven. Look how pleasant it is. Look how nice this sounds. Ah, surprised you there. This is D seven, right? It's a very different sound than this. Okay, this is very nice, very pleasant, very within the scale. And this is suddenly a completely different scale. It's a completely different scale. D7 takes the A7 or the A major 7 into a completely different scale. You're no longer in A major. When you play E, if you play E major 7, okay, then again, you're in the E major scale. But when you play E7, you're in a whole new scale altogether. Okay, but the E7 works as the dominant chord for A major. So you can say that the only outside chord here is actually D7, okay? Because it has nothing to do inside the A major scale. I really hope that you're starting to get this. If not, again, stay with me. This is only just the start, okay? I'm not kidding. I haven't even touched on the pentatonic scales. So, the seventh of the chord goes down half a step to create a major chord with a minor seventh. A major chord, A, with a minor seventh. This is the major seventh. Take it down one fret and you get a dirty chord. You get tension. You get the seventh chord, which is a major chord with the minor seventh. Okay, this is the seventh note from the A minor scale. So you're actually playing A major with a note out of the A minor scale. And this is why you can play the A minor pentatonic on it. Okay, because it's a major chord, but you're playing it with a minor harmony. Okay. Now, if you play the blues with the A major scale, the A major pentatonic, okay, then this gives you a pleasant sound. Okay. And then only the seventh works as a sort of a modifier to the chord. But then when you go to D7, all hell breaks loose because again, you're not supposed to play A minor or major on this. You're not supposed to play. You're not supposed to play. You're supposed to be playing D. You're supposed to be playing D minor. You're supposed to be playing. Okay. Okay, you're supposed to be playing the D minor pentatonic. And some people do, okay? That's another way to improvise over the D7 chord there. Um, but most people just stay on the minor pentatonic, okay? If you actually do play the major pentatonic on, on the blues, then kudos, okay? Um, hats off to you. Most people stay on the minor their whole lives, and they don't even know that they can do so much more than that. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, he, he likes to play simple blues. He doesn't like sophisticated blues. Um, so, what happens when you go to E7? When you go to E7, it's the same thing. You can play the E. 
You can play the E pentatonic, the E minor pentatonic. And here's, here's the kicker. You can also play the E major pentatonic. <laughs> Now you can't hear it because I'm I'm not playing harmony and melody together, but when you're playing the E the E major pentatonic, you actually have the the A chord ah, slightly out of tune. You have the A chord in there. You have okay okay. You have you have the framework for A major. So you see, this is already complicated, but let me complicate it even more for you. Um, you probably heard about the blue note, right? When you play the A uh, minor pentatonic, okay, you have you have this, okay, the, okay, the the blue note, the flat five, okay, this note. So the flat five. Okay, actually makes this also diminished. Makes it also a diminished sound because uh, if you have A major, okay, and you take the fifth of the chord down, you have you have A diminished. Okay, now a diminished chord is not always major. Actually, it's minor most of the time. Okay, but let's. Forget about that for a second. That's not what I'm going for. I'm going for the diminished sound inside the blues. So when you have A7 and you have the, the diminished sound, you can actually play the diminished scale okay, inside the blues. And you can do it with every one of these chords. You can play a diminished scale over the D, uh, the D7. Okay, you can play a diminished scale over A. Okay, as I showed you, and you have to go back to the pentatonic. Obviously, you have to resolve it somehow. Okay, and then then you're back to the pentatonic. That's more about improvisation, but I'm talking theory here. Okay, so on E, okay, you also have. Okay, you have the you, you you have a diminished option there because the seventh chord is also part of the diminished seven chord. I'm not gonna go there. I just want you to listen to it. If you play a seven, okay, I'm not gonna break this down theoretically because this would be too much. Okay, but if you have a seven and you raise the bass to B uh, flat. You have a B flat diminished seven chord. Okay, so if you take this down, you'd have an A diminished seven chord. Okay, but this is the sound that you're going for because A seven is a part of this diminished seven chord, and this is what enables you, okay, to solo over a diminished scale. As well within the blues. So let's go back to major for a second. You can merge the minor and major scales together and that's actually the the simplest way to play sophisticated blues without knowing your way around the neck. So the merged minor and major scales would be something around the Dorian scale, which is this. Okay, and you can add the blue note as well, so you'll have okay, and you can add the major third of A. Hey, don't worry, I'm gonna break it down. I just want you to listen first. So okay, and this is kind of like the full scale that you can use around the blues on A without going all over the neck. So you have the A minor scale, so you have 8, 7, 5 on the first rank. Okay, now if you're daring, you can play the major 7th as well on 4, so you can do... Okay, 
And you can do the same thing on the second string because okay, the seventh there is the major note of, of D. Okay, so okay, you have this. And then you can do 5-4 because 4 is the flat 5. So you have... Now, that was just going around it. It wasn't very bluesy, but I just wanted you to get used to the sound. And the kicker here okay, is to add the major third note of A, okay, and not the minor note. Because when you're playing A7, there's a minor third here and a major third in the chord. So you can solo with it as well. So you can add six on the third string. So then you have, you actually have, um, you have from, um, from eight to four, because four is inside the minor scale. So you have. Okay, so you actually have pretty much all the notes of the, the, uh, that are available to us uh, in Western music. You have all the notes, it's chromatic. Okay, and this is, okay, six on the second string is a minor note, right? Okay, so you have this. Okay, now what about six on the first string, you ask? You can use that as well if you want. Okay, you can use it, you can use it. It's, it's an outside note. And I was wondering, I was debating myself throughout this whole lesson whether I want to talk about outside notes. I'm not, but I will give you this tip. Okay? Because you have three different scales here, okay? for the three different chords. You actually have six different scales because they're both minor and major, right? So that means that you can pretty much do whatever you want. So you can move, okay? This is how you get the outside sound, but that's for another lesson. You can move the pentatonic scale without all these additions, just the pentatonic scale, okay? You can move it around one fret up and back down or one fret down and back up, and that will create the outside sound. And, um, Again, there's an explanation for this because the the dominant chord, the E7, um, it can be E7, it can be E9, it can be E, uh, e sharp nine, it can be um, it can be E. Um, uh, that, that's too complicated. It can be E flat nine um, because you can extend a dominant chord any way you wish which means that you can play outside any way you wish. Okay, so you can take it one fret up or one fret down. Okay, or... Okay, now again, this, this is a sound that is a little bit difficult to get used to. Okay, but this is a really huge part of jazz, uh, taking the scale outside. Okay, and coming back. to go into it, you'll see that when you take the scale sideways, you're playing the notes that I just showed you. Because you're playing all the notes. So if you still think that the blues is simple, I'm sorry I did my best. So I will see you in the next lesson. Thank you very much for watching. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Bye for now. Enjoy.